Hello there, one and all, and welcome to episode 379 of Love at First Scent with me, Persolaise, live on YouTube. As always, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please do consider doing so. And if you do so, make sure that you click on the little bell so that you get notifications of new videos, whether you're watching live. And if you're watching live, thank you very much for tuning in. Or you're watching the recording, please feel free to leave a comment, ask a question at any time. And first comment today goes to... Pradeep, who says, hello everyone, hi to you as well, Pradeep Cyrus is here as well, saying hi Mr P and good day all from Montreal, Polpo is giving us a wave, Milad says good evening from Muscat, wearing silver birch from Amurud, okay, Natasha says hi all, um, I've never heard of Toba, which is brilliant, because now you have, so just very very quickly for those of you who are watching live, the, the plan for today is that we're going to try to do three videos um, back to back. I'm, I'm sure we'll be able to do two. We'll have to see if there's time for a third one. The first one is a showcase review of this brand that is new to a lot of us, I think. And then the second video will be a single perfume release from a brand that I'm sure a lot of you are aware of. And then the third one will be kind of to do with smells, but, but not necessarily perfume if we are able to do the third one. Okay, because I have got six that I want to smell with you right now in this episode, I think we need to uh, get going. Um, Sharon says, greetings all from Dallas, Texas. You're very welcome. Claire says, hi, Jeannie. Where's Jeannie? Sent Jeannie says, hey, everyone. Hello, one and all. And soon, is it soon? Soon says, whoa, I made it on time. Yes, you have. Okay, so this brand, Toba. First thing I suppose I should say to you is that I have yet to find out why it's called Toba or what Toba means. Um, it launched in the UK, I think maybe about three months ago, something like that, three or four months ago. Um, and uh, it, certainly at the time, it was exclusive to Harvey Nichols. Um, and as far as I'm aware, it may still be an exclusive. Um, the, the founder is a chap called Jasper Lee, about whom I know very, very little. I think it's kind of quite good in a way, actually, knowing very little, because we can, we can you just focus on the sense. I mean, sometimes it's nice to have a bit of context, but when it's a completely new brand with six perfumes that, in a way, have just sort of come to us out of nowhere, you can just focus on the smells. I know that he is a painter, or certainly a former painter. There's a little bit of a blurb here, which is just from the brand's website, where it says, Toba's founder, Jasper Lee, Views perfume as a work of art and a way of expression. Well, that's great, because so do we. Having transformed abstract ideas into symbols and compositions in his paintings, the artist perfumer, so the brand calls him the perfumer, is then influenced by the statement, art is not bounded by one dimension, which drastically changed the course of his artistic journey and which continues to drive him to experiment with different mediums. Or media, maybe. Anyway. Um, scent being one of them turns out to be the perfect canvas for him. Jasper translates the visual into the olfactory, utilizing a wide variety of ingredients to build layers, add depth and create textures while evoking heartwarming memories that form the foundation of the audience's interpretation and which render the fragrances timeless and limit defying. So, a modest blurb. <laughs> Maybe the fragrances will live up to it. Um, oh, Woozy says, I heard one of them is a Dries van Noten dupe. Ah, as in, I presume you mean the discontinued Frederick Mal Dries van Noten. Now, I've also been very, very good, and I've done the thing that we did a little while ago with another video, in that I have pre-sprayed all six of these. I sprayed them, what time is it now? It's just gone five o'clock in the UK, so I guess these were sprayed about an hour and a half, two hours ago so that we can also get a sense of what the dry down is like. But I think we should we should go. We should. I, I'm going to start in the order in which they are in this discovery set with one called Indolence, which apparently is sexy, woody, and musky. So not much to live up to there. Okay, let's, let's actually label the blotters. I mean, Indolence is... <laughs> interesting sort of name for a perfume, isn't it? I'm not, I'm not sure it, it kind of sells it very well, but there we go. Okay, indolence, the first scent that we are smelling from Toba. And if anybody can find out what Toba means, I would be very, very grateful if you would let me know. Okay, it starts off as a very, very pleasant 
not overly sweet amber. Maybe, maybe shades of um, Calvin Klein obsession for women with, with a sort of slightly green touch. Not, not overly complex or faceted. And yes, I suppose I suppose it is sensuous. I mean, I'm thinking green ambers. Why am I thinking green ambers? Let's see, because it's got a list of notes here as well. Soft flower, that's helpful. Um, <laughs> Ambroxan, patchouli, cashmere, and caraway. Okay, so that's a little bit anisic, isn't it? Maybe that's making me because I'm thinking I'm thinking um, original obsession for women. I'm thinking allure, sensuelle from Chanel. Um, at least indolence rhymes with insolence, says Tomash. Yes, it does. Let's see what the brand itself says about it, because I'm and and you know this isn't this isn't any kind of privileged material that I have here. This is this is what it is that or you can get anybody can get on the website. A scent that unleashes the inner self, it says of indolence. Okay, um, rays of sunlight seep through the blinds, gently warming up the floor. As he immerses himself, okay, I've just seen the rest of this sentence. As he immerses himself in the fragrance of his tea. Why is he immersing himself in here? Anyway. <sighs> Do not go there with that joke that may be on the minds of some of you right now. Get the joke out of your minds now. Um, a faint scent dances on the tip of his nose. Fresh citrus with earthy notes of soil. Is it sweat or tobacco? He gives in to temptations. Okay. A little bit all over the place. Perhaps there is no rule, but within deviance lies charm. Uh, jolly good. Maudlin is hastily deleting the comment. Oh, happy Father's Day, everybody, says Aria. Yes, absolutely, to everybody who's celebrating it. Um, I'm left a little bit speechless, but but yeah, it, it's 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 a very very pleasant it's a very pleasant amber, um, and as I say, it's meant to have a top note of mandarin and then caraway, mate, absolute cedar, ambroxan, patchouli. Um, let's let's see. I never know, I don't know which way around is the best way to do this. I suppose it makes sense to actually do the dry down bit now. So where's my pre sprayed indolence? This will feel like I'm immersing myself in my tea. Oh, God. Okay. Right. So it, it hasn't changed very much. It's obviously just very, very linear. It, it is still a nicely done, perhaps a slightly woodier amber. The patchouli is not overly earthy or dirty. And, and I noticed they haven't necessarily sort of actually mentioned anything particularly sweet, but th this definitely does... Um, tend towards sweetness. Okay, well, let, let's see how the other blotter does as well. I mean, so that that's fine, but, but not earth-shattering. The second one is called Ombre Verte, as in, as in I guess that means a green shadow. So no prizes for guessing where that one may be going. And the three words that we have to describe that one are vegetal, elegant, floral. Okay. Ombre Verte. From Toba. Um, Maudlin says, that must be lemon with your t-shirt. Um, that joke is acceptable. You can do that joke. Okay. Um, Persilase is Harrison Ford in the fragrance world, says Dusan. Why? <laughs> okay. You need to tell me why. Right. Um, ombre verte. Yeah, I was... I mean, I, I was thinking, okay, this is going to be really sort of quite galbanum-y green. Um, and I suppose it is green, but it's not shockingly green. You know, it's not synthetic jungle green. Um, and there's, rather than woodiness, there's actually almost like a kind of slightly, sorry, rather than floral, as it's that word said, there, it's almost like a sort of slightly animalic woodiness coming through, which maybe ties in with the shadow idea. Um, so maybe we're meant to put the emphasis on the ombre rather than on the on the vert. Um, there's something I want to say figgy. Is it? Is it? So apparently it's cypress, moss, vetiver, tuberose, 
mimosa, cedarwood, and cashmere ran again. I mean, I, I might say yes to something mossy or cedary, but I would have sworn there was something more overtly patchouli-like here. Pradeep says, is, is it a sheep? Well, yes, I suppose you could you could say that because of the moss, it's got that kind of slightly inky feel to it. It's quite elegant, actually. Let's see. Let's see. I'm going to enjoy their blurbs, actually. I want, I want to do each perfume's blurb from the website. So this was what? This was Ombre Verte. Um, Ombre Verte is inspired by the kaleidoscopic quality of oil paintings, which see countless shades of the same colour coming together to form a visually stimulating multi-layered masterpiece. Okay, well, that's a bit easier to read. Okay, we, we like this one. The Eau de Parfum starts off with an invigorating whiff of wild plants, gradually moving on to a melange of refreshing Italian cypress and mildly smoky Haitian vetiver, while the tuberose elevates the tone with an irresistible elegance. Finishing notes of cedar and ambroxan give the abstract fragrance a velvety texture, encompassing all kinds of woody scents, all kinds of woody scents, to mimic the symphony of vibrant hues on breathtaking artworks. Okay, well, that, that that's a better blurb. Um, and yes, there is a vetiver. The, the vetiver is coming through as well. This one, this one is sort of is, is quite kind of smart, sophisticated. I think they use the word opulent on the website. I wouldn't have. <laughs> Pradeep says, "Calm down, brand. Already masterpiecing it." Well, they have to, I suppose, don't they? So, where's the pre-sprayed ombre verte? Okay, here we go. Ah. Okay, so. Definitely more of a vetiver now, two hours after having been sprayed, but not overly swampy, actually nicely sort of um, linking the vetiver with, with, with the cedar wood, I suppose. It's, it's smart is the word, as in, you know, sort of nicely buttoned, buttoned up smart. Um, but not, it's, it's sort of not giving me a huge amount to smell, really. What's that indolence one doing? Well, on the strength of these two so far, they're pretty linear and maybe just a notch above monodimensional. I mean, there's, there's, they're quite landscapey, I suppose. And I wonder if his paintings were landscapes. They, they seem to be more interested in wide vistas rather than detail. So actually, let's take that as a kind of cue and let's see what sort of landscape it would be. So indolence. Indolence would be like maybe a, a, an urban landscape, a city landscape, but seen from a distance with skyscrapers and twinkling ambery lights in the distance. And maybe somewhere in the background, maybe it's like a city that's sort of surrounded by mountains. Like, there is something urban about indolence, I think. And the Ombre Verte, what kind of landscape would that be? Th this, is, this is just craggy mountains, quite dark dark brown mountains, a little bit forbidding, a little bit threatening, but but not overly so. Um, Maudlin says, looking at the woods from outside instead of venturing in. Possibly, possibly. Third one is called Tendresse, tendresse d'Automne, so the tenderness of autumn. Not the best, um, not the best choice for today. It's an extremely muggy day down here in the south of England. It keeps raining on and off. Even the rain doesn't seem to want to make up its mind about whether it wants to rain properly or not. But anyway, tendresse, tendresse to Tom. Which one is promising to mimic Dries van Noten, says Claire? I don't know. I mean, I'll, don't tell me, okay? Don't tell me because I want to, don't put it in the comment just yet because we've got four more dry downs to go. And already I'm thinking which one might be the Dries van Noten. So let's see. This is tendresse or Tom. What are the words for this one? Sensual, soapy. Sensual and soapy should not be put together. And modern, so sensual, soapy, and modern. Okay. Um, soapy, yes. I'm getting actually what I'm getting here is a hint of some an old Penhaligons, but which one? Oh, Maudlin says another deleted comment. Yeah, don't don't tell me just yet. Don't tell me just yet. Let's see if we agree at the end. This one, ah, oh, what does this remind me of? This is really, really going to bug me because it immediately made me think of Penhaligons. Ooh, maybe Penhaligons orange blossom. Yes, I think there's something, and 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 Penhaligons, um, Penhaligons um, orange blossom 
has always had for me that I mean the Bertrand du Chaffour version right which I love has always got a really really beautifully clean soapy quality to it um next to the leaves and it's almost and it's also reminding me of Amaranthine which was another Bertrand du Chaffour creation for Penhaligans and shared links with orange blossom what have we got here violet leaf aldehydes rose iris root magnolia sandalwood and musks yeah this is this is the, the the most interesting one so far and actually tenderness of autumn is not a bad word because with that cue in my head with that sort of prompt in my head i'm quite happy to actually to picture a part a tree lined park a tree filled park in november with a lot of the leaves um falling but the the iris note is nicely done the iris note is very very gentle here let's see what they say about it tendresse au tom an elegant sheep they say tendresse au tom is truly a tribute to the classic doesn't tell us which one with that definite article dry and powdery iris together with sublime notes of violet rose and ylang ylang evoke the thin whiffs of nature thin whiffs of nature in early autumn wrapped with sensual hints of sandalwood and musk the concoction is elevated with contrasting sense of vetiver to convey a unique quality it's extraordinary it's seductive it's a la mode um it's very very pretty it's very very pretty actually best one so far so let's see the dry down tendresse tendresse i'm wondering if this is going to be the one that you guys are saying see the the dry down is actually making me think more of penhaligon's orange blossom somewhere between orange blossom and amaranthine um but i wonder if you're going to say that this is the dries van noten one let's see let's see let's see okay We've got three to go. We're doing well. Best one so far was the last one. Next is Rose on the Shore. Rose on the Shore. So is this just going to be? This is green, airy, and rosy. Okay, I wonder if this is going to be just a fairly straight up and down. Ah, oh, great. How do I get that pencil down without? I'm not going to be able to get that pencil down without completely wrecking the set. Never mind. And I don't have anything else to write. Oh, no, I have a pen. Thank goodness for backup plans. There's teacher training for you. Always have a plan, boo. Rose on the Shore um, from Toba. Quite a spiky rose, actually. Not not a sort of not as sort of innocent as I thought it would be. I mean, yes, it is green, and it is quite airy and peppery, but also striky and shades of shades of um, Frederick Mal une rose, which is now called what Rose Tonnerre. Um, yeah, I think I think I think they've done some. Some good sort of caranal inspired work there. What are the notes? What are the official notes? Pink pepper, musk, geranium, rose de may, rose water, patchouli, and vetiver. Ooh, and some some ambery woods as well. Some Velcro woods in there for sure. But why on the shore? Why rose on the shore? This 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 is actually rose very very definitely growing out of rich dark brown earth. So sorry, but the landscape I'm getting here is a, a a a a rose field in the rain maybe that's the shore but you know the shore always makes me think that it's going to be sunny and beachy and beautiful hmm and what what do they say they say a bed of exquisite roses grew out of narrow gaps between weather-beaten rocks that sit beside the majestic atlantic ocean um, in face of raging wind and towering waves, the fearless flowers still keep their chins up. Yes, as somebody just said, um, Gavin says it's very specifically the Atlantic too, not just any shore. Okay, which side though? Pecan starting notes of pink pepper and Egyptian geranium set a cool tone, while the heart is graced with an engrossing juxtaposition between the intense rose de may, refreshing lychee leaves, and warm castorium to convey its rich emotions and a contrasting nonchalance. Well, that's the dark leatheriness there. An impeccable mix of patchouli and vetiver then rounds off with some, with sorry, with soothing woody aromas. A sui generis rose scented eau de parfum standing out of the crowd with its unique characteristics and timelessness. Um, but, but it is, it, it, it is just kind of a, we, we've had this sort of rose before. Let's see the dry down or let's smell the dry down. Um, ah, I've just seen what Eco Jock's done. Rose, the woman's name on holiday. Very, very good. 
yeah, so with the passage of time, it's very definitely a patchouli, patchouli rose. Nicely done, but doesn't reinvent the wheel. Um, okay, fine. So, so far, so far, the winner, if we want to, if we would use those sorts of terms, is still the autumn one. Two to go, and I haven't come across the, oh gosh, losing everything today. I haven't come across the Dries van Noten yet, unless I'm being particularly nose blind. So next we have Serendipity, which is meant to be woody, leathery, and ambery. Serendipity, okay, let's see what this is going to be like. And one more to go after this one, and we still haven't found, or I don't think I found the... Oh, I, I know, okay, so this is going to be your Jerry van Noten clone, is it right? I think. Okay, so it's got that kind of spicy, nutmeggy, slightly cookie dough, you know, maybe shades of speculos type opening, I think. And maybe a hint of butteriness, but certainly on the strength of the opening, the Dries van Noten is better, is superior. Um, oh, it has saffron in it, says Gavin. Right. Um, but it also makes me think of, if if indeed this is the one that you're thinking is Dries van Noten, it's, oh yeah, it, it's this one, says Woozy. Okay, there we go. Um, but it's also making me think of the kind of licorice-y thing from the likes of body kouros and maybe something anisic like from the original Lolita Lempitska for men. Do you remember that one? And, 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 oh, and there's something very definitely black orchidy about it. Something, something quite angry about it. There's meant to be a strong salt note, says Woozy. Okay, they... This sounds nice, says Maudlin. Yeah, but I'm not a huge fan of black orchid. Apparently, this has got saffron, nutmeg, sandalwood, and interestingly, in brackets, they've put sandalwood, milky aspect, amber, patchouli, and tonka bean. It's, there is a kind of throwback quality to it. Somewhere between body koros and, and, and black orchid. You know how body koros, why sell body koros, had a very, very kind of textured quality to it. Um, it's interesting. It's interesting. We shall we shall smell the, the the dry down in a moment. It says my source sandalwood on the website. Is it actually the proper thing? Well, who knows, Gavin? We won't be able to. I can't wait maybe to say for sure. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? So this was what. Um, this is this is serendipity, right? My mind's gone. Um, gentle breezes, scorching sand, mesmerizing artisanal carpets, and welcoming natives. Serendipity vividly portrays the fascinating encounters and discoveries during an eye-opening journey across the Silk Road. A rich melange of nutmeg and saffron sits lightly atop of the sandalwood mysore, sparking curiosity with an element of surprise. Hints of clove echo... Yeah, I'm just looking at Maudlin's comment kind of going... <laughs> Yeah, well, it's there. Don't shoot the messenger, please. Hints of clove echo the starting sense of exotic spices while a touch of patchouli intertwines with sophisticated notes of minerals and leather to channel a mysterious charm. Um, yeah, I think you're all responding to that. I did not see that one coming, but if, okay, well, let's let's just smell the thing and, and deal with that later. So this is serendipity. Let's see if it's more Dries-like on the... It's a whole new world from Aladdin, says Gavin. Yes, I can... Shining, shimmering, splendid, maybe not. Um, Okay, there is definitely a good sandalwood note in there, which is maybe why a lot of you thought of um, Dries van Noten. But I'm thinking, I'm thinking somewhere, somewhere that the the brave new world between Dries van Noten and and Tom Ford's Black Orchid, which maybe is not a territory that we necessarily want to be visiting anytime soon. Um, Woozy says, well, at least they're owning it, unlike Byredo with Gypsy Water and Mumbai Noise. I so don't want to get into this, this particular debate now. Have the debate amongst yourselves, but, but keep it keep it polite. Um, there's there's a slightly too synthetic quality, I think, though that that's just bugging me about this one. I'm because the thing about Dries van Noten, and maybe it's not fair that that comparison was put in my head. But the thing about the dry down of the Dries van Noten is that it's just so smooth and so rich and fleshy and snuggly and very very real smelling. Whereas this is, 
This is this is this is sort of just falling shy of serendipitous. Gavin says Dries van Noten is quite leathery. Yeah, but not at all in an aggressive way, I don't think. I mean it's 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 just so smooth and smoothly planed and 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 swish and sophisticated. Um let's do the last one, which is called force. So we started with indolence and we finished with force. Uh, force, 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 the last of these. Now, I have to say on the strength of these ones so far, that, that, I mean, okay, it, it's nice It's nice smelling something that a brand has done right at the beginning of their life and then maybe being able to track the progress of where they've gone. But th it's it's very, very, very difficult for new brands because even if, you know, if, if they've got like one or two new perfumes and personally they'd like to launch with just one or two perfumes, there are so many, um, there is so much pressure on them from retailers to, to release more. And uh, because 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 the retailers won't stock them, they will say, "Look, we are not going to give you the shelf space unless you give us five or six, because we we can't, you know, we we can't have you in the corner of the shelf. You need to take up several shelves. You need to have the packaging standing out." And so then the brands have to go away and maybe make more perfumes quickly, you know, a lot faster than they might like to. So I don't, you know, I'm not saying that this is particularly what happened with this brand, but it is something that's happened with lots of brands in the past. Um, Gavin says the notes for this one sound a little bit all over the place. Actually, I didn't read the little blurb, did I? So this is mysterious incense green with spearmint, cypress, cocoa absolute, licorice, fir balsam, myrrh, patchouli, and suede. That sounds interesting. Um, oh, gosh, okay. So this is actually the first one that seems to be operating on lots of different levels because there's something very, very strangely greeny, piney odd at the top like like pond water that's just sort of sprinkled with pine needles um and in the base there's something incense -y and what else did they say patchouli and suede yeah there's definitely some kind of balsamic thing this is interesting this is interesting this this, this is the first one that's made me think oh okay I'm not, I don't think I'm going to figure this out very very quickly um and what do they say about force force the universe is filled with energy from the very first day of its existence now this is when I need to get my um red pen out and say check your tenses please from beings competing relentlessly for survival to atoms of still objects violently jostling one another Force embodies this vitality and celebrates life with its eccentric fragrance. Italian cypress joins forces with mint. Yes, of course, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's weirdly minty. Uh, with mint, licorice, with cocoa absolute, and Siberian fir balsam with patchouli and leather. Each of the three distinct layers dominates the other two in turn, captivating with a mysterious yet intense woody concoction. It is actually quite mysterious and it is quite strange. And it's the first one that's made me think, I'm not sure I've smelt this before. It's actually making me think of some of the better stuff that years ago we used to get from Andrea Mack. You know, do you remember when she did Coven and some of her early scents that were really quite odd with, with really genuinely unexpected juxtapositions? This is doing that kind of thing. So if this were a landscape, this would be like one of those clever landscapes where you're actually looking at two landscapes at the same time. So maybe it's actually from the point of view of, of, of the interior of a room, but the room is wall to wall to wall floor to ceiling glass and so you can see like a, a pine forest in the distance as well um that 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 kind of very very much juxtaposition based landscape um it's curious and that mint is just so fascinatingly weird here the way it kind of links with 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 the pine note and the patchouli but of course, you're all very, very curious to find out what it's doing in the dry down. So one of one of one of the forces will have lost the battle, I think. Um let's see. Okay, so this is now much more about the patchouli and the myrrh and that kind of slightly fungal quality that myrrh lends to fragrances. But I think actually there is still enough of that weird greenness at the top to be detectable. This is this is the fascinating one. Out of the six, this is the one where I'm thinking, oh, actually, I want to see what this is going to be like on skin. Let's just very, very, very quickly do um, the others. So the rose, yeah, the rose, I think, is going to be a pretty straightforward kind of spiky wood patchouli rose. This is serendipity. 
Yeah, I, I'm thinking Black Orchid and Dries van Noten. Indolence was the very first one. It's basically a, a pleasant amber. Tendresse d'Otom was the one that I liked as well, wasn't it? See, I like I like that because it's kind of gentle and soft and delicate, and those iris and orange blossomy white floral notes are just very, very well done. But it is it is a bit more familiar. Um, the green shadow, which wasn't really a green shadow. Yeah, that, that's basically a, a, a Betty there. And then what's Force doing right now? Oh, that's that's strange. That's that's like chewing gum that's kind of erupted from brown soil. Who uh, Andrea Max Coven, a strange but wonderful perfume, says Sharon. Yeah, I really, really liked it. And I remember when it came out, I'm pretty sure I put it on my list of the of the best perfumes for that year. It was just so bizarre and witchy, you know, properly witchy, and it was so, so, so well named. Okay, so we have done Toba. Uh, thank you very much for watching this. We'll be back in a few minutes, for those of you watching live, with a single perfume review. But uh, thanks very much for watching this one, and um, see you again soon. Bye now.